course, when you have a great and illustrious football history, which includes the best winning percentage of all time, which I think is the best indicator of a program's staying power and its elite status over history, more so than people voting for national championships for most of the history of college football. But it does, maybe it just feels that way being a Buckeyes fan that there is an inordinate amount of near misses throughout the history of the program. Steve, technically, we are in the window, as was mentioned when you were running through uh, the national championships during our lifetime and us being the same age. Um, technically, we, we snuck three in there, uh, one being in 1968 there. So, so, so we, so we yeah. snuck the first one in there. I was born in February of 68 and they won it, you know, obviously on January the 1st of 1969. So <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I, I, I do have three in my lifetime. So yeah, I guess cor correct me on that, but uh, you get the gist of what I'm saying. It's so yeah, infrequent. And, and here's the thing. When you get to the, to the tip of the spear, you know, when you get to the, the rarefied air, you know, as Urban used to say, you know, as he was sending him out to play Michigan, the air on the other side of that door is rare. You know, the, the Ohio State teams that beat Michigan, those are the special teams. And the Ohio State teams that win national championships are even three times more special than that, you know, when you think about it, because it's just it, – it is such a difficult task to – have everything fall in line. In 2014, they were, you know, the dreaded team of destiny. In 2002, they were the underdog, the, the team of destiny. You know, in 06, they were the front runner. They were one, number one wire to wire. 98, they were number one for a good part of the season, almost wire to wire till they lost to Michigan State. Under the current format, they would have still made the final four, you know, in, in 1998. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and probably won it because I don't think Tennessee or Florida State that year were worth a crap at all. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, there have been so many close calls and so many uh, uh, tough, tough finishes for this team. You know, we bring back the, the Clemson loss in 2019. Well, you didn't want to win that game anyway because Joe Burrow – was going to put up a you know a 40 50 spot against you and he was going to win that one regardless of who showed up the Chicago Bears could have showed up and he was going to win that one so you know it didn't matter you look at what they did they probably had the single greatest season any team's ever had in college football history they beat like eight or nine ranked teams and like six or seven five six seven top 10 teams along the way it was just nuts what they accomplished and uh, his individual exploits that year, you know, I always say it's like Thad Mata losing to Kansas in the semifinals. I joked with him three months later, you didn't want to play Anthony Davis and, and uh, you know, that team, Kentucky, in the championship game anyway because Kentucky went in and smoked Kansas regardless. So, again, uh, so we can, we can say, oh, yeah, 19 was a near miss. Well, they weren't the best team in college football in 19. They were a really good team but they weren't the best team. So, you know, have they had the best team the last two years, three years? No, not with that defense. No. So uh, not certainly not in 20 when they got beat by four touchdowns by Alabama or whatever it was. So, or 20, 21, whatever year it was. So they all run together. Kevin, so I think know, I can so speak know the for the team doesn't always win. I mean, and that's the thing. Yeah. And I think that, that I mean, you, you bring up the Joe Burrow year with at LSU. I mean, you get into a you get into a, a 60 59 game, and you just I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. Anything I mean, can happen, yeah. I was going to say LSU's weakest point was that its its secondary wasn't great. For people trying to classify it as like the greatest football team of all time, there were some warts on that defense. I mean, and and I understand that they had you know some solid defensive backs, but as, as secondary play was not, it was not akin to what the offense was doing there, but you're only going to have one national champion each year. And that is what it is. And certainly Ohio state, when it won its title over Miami, who was the better team at that point? It was Miami. I mean, in terms of what you see on game the game and everything else, but Ohio state was the better team that game had the better game plan 
and executed a hell of a lot better than my and physical. Did. Yeah. So yeah, you could go through all of these years like J bags has and, and have these, but only one team is going to come out at the end and, you know, whatever we're up to 131 division one, a teams at this point, 130 teams are not going to get there, but, uh, Ohio State certainly has had a history of being unlucky in some of the, you know, in the biggest situations. But, you know, we look at 06 and 07. I mean, Ohio State pretty much left everything on the field against Michigan, goes to play Florida and what's, you know, really thought of it in the moment as an afterthought and gets whacked. You sit there and you go to the 07 game against LSU, playing them, playing LSU in its own backyard. I still wonder what the outcome of the game is. If Brian Robisky makes that early touchdown catch, that ends up being a 14 point swing or whatever it is. And Ohio state ends up getting away from the, uh, uh, getting away from a run game that was working very well, because when you fall behind multiple scores, you have to sit there and, and make adjustments. But um, yeah, I, Ohio state certainly has had a lot of opportunities to prove that it's the best team and should be the last team standing only to have something go awry. Even though it looks on the scoreboard like LSU blew out Clemson, and that was the final outcome, 42-25, you know, that was a 28-25 game in the fourth quarter. So, and I don't think Clemson was better than Ohio State. But anyway, yes, uh, Steve, to your point, LSU was the best team in the country that year. To Kevin's point, they may not have been the best team had they played Ohio State uh, for the national championship, we'll never know, of course, who would have won the game. But, you know, if we take any elite program, even Saban winning all those national championships, if we take Alabama all the way back through the rest of our lifetime, you know, you're going to have a list of years where you could say, man, they, they could have won in 13. They could have won in 18. They could have, you know, list the Alabama years where they rose so close, 21. You can do that with any team. It just seems to be a little inordinate, uh, and maybe that's just uh, my scarlet and gray. And just these, when you look at some of these years, I think I can speak for Ohio State fans because I am one that that some of these years, looking at these years, still bring me, you know, shudders. Still, still makes me cringe. So it, it uh, yes, but uh, we cannot rewrite history. We can talk about it, and it's fun to speculate of what might have been, what could have been, had officials made different decisions, and uh, you know. Justin Fields and Chris Olave been on the same page, breaking off a route. All those things um, are, are interesting to speculate, but um, they are what they are at this point. Uh, kickers making 50-yard field goals. That's a lot to ask, but it can be done. 